What's up, everyone? This is Oliver Fernandez, and today I want to tie together the previous three episodes of what you must do before you do anything. So this is the first week after having someone help us take care of our baby girl, Liliana. With both Leah and I still working, the past couple weeks have felt like we were literally swimming in the middle of the ocean. We could never really get ahead. Having the extra set of hands, especially when our baby girl we call Lil Mama wakes up early or doesn't get settled, literally feels like someone has come to our rescue with a life raft. So let's jump right into it today. What I want to do is I want to tie together the mobilize your mindset, what you must do before you do anything. The reason I want to tie this together for you all is it's so important because most people just jump right into doing and then they do for three weeks and then they stop. They do for three months and then they stop. They do for a year and then they just stop. And they do it again and again and again, year after year after year after year. And I did it. It's a vicious cycle. The cycle continues because the peace people skip step one, mobilizing their mindset. They skip it. And then they jump right into step two and they just start doing. Step one is a must. You don't want to fall in this trap of living life knowing that there is more out there for you, your ideas, for your family, for the people you want to help. And you can't jump right into step two without doing step one and get the success you want. So this is what you must do before you do anything. You have to have a big goal in life. For me, growing up, it was to have a run a large construction company. I wanted to own big trucks and have heavy equipment. Now, once you have this goal, you have to believe. It's a must. Most people don't ever even have goals to believe in. Or they may have a goal, but that goal is so small that they set out on. They they actually, and they hit it. And Les Brown says, most people don't fail in life because they set big goals and miss. Les Brown says, most people fail in life because they set small goals and actually hit them. So set goals that you'll be excited about to go after. Set goals that you'll be excited about to believe in. Believing in my goals started with my mom. So growing up, we lived in Maine with my mom and my three sisters and My mom was a city girl. Like she didn't know anything about Maine, the woods, the sticks, the country. Like she grew up in Washington, D.C. She grew up around people, around family. When we moved to Maine, we were isolated. Our closest family members, which was on my dad's side, were two hours away. We were totally up there by ourselves. And my mom, she didn't really have any experience with growing up in the woods, in the wilderness. So like when we ran into problems, my mom always tried. Like when the, we would lose power in Maine, like our electricity runs on power poles. So like in the middle of winter, the power poles get hit with trees and our power lines go down. And in the middle of winter, we'd lose power. And my mom didn't know what to do. But I always saw her try. We would go out to the woodshed and get wood and start a fire. My mom didn't just sit there and just say, I wish we could do this. I I wish we could do that. My mom actually did. And it created this belief inside me to actually do. To believe in something, believe it's possible before it even is, is possible. To believe I could do it before I actually even do it. I have also been raised with the belief that like, I need to search for my mentors And once I search for my mentors, they help raise my belief. That one for me has made me tremendously successful. It has made the success actually tangible. It helped me take an idea and to make it into a reality. I remember when I first started out on my business, we would go to these vendor outreach events and 
prior to the vendor outreach events, I would always be at home like researching companies and seeing what other companies were doing and what other companies were getting for contracts. And then I'd be like, man, I really want to get my company to that size. Like that's a good size company. They're getting, you know, multi-million dollar contracts. I want to, I want to get my company to be like that. And then I'd go to these vendor outreach events and then I'd run into these people. I'd run into the owners. Like, they were in front of me in line to go speak to the same people that I was getting ready to speak to. And I would see them. I would see how they acted. I would see how they, they behaved. We would even talk. And I would just think and I would be like, oh, my God, these people are just like me. It made my goals actually tangible. It made them, it made them closer to me. It made them feel like I could actually hit them. So belief is the air in the balloon that helps you get off the ground. It is the first step. The second step is commitment. This is the hardest one for me. This is the hardest one for anyone. It's hard because you can't point a finger at the next person. With commitment, you have to point the finger at yourself. It is easier for people to believe their goals are possible than it is for people to be committed to their goal. This is the single most important reason that most people fail in life or most people fail at going after their dreams and goals. Most people will try to go after their dreams or try to go after something courageous. will say, I, I tried this and I tried that and it didn't work. We all have been there and it's one of the worst feelings in the world. It brings me back to when I was in high school, I used to always tell myself I was committed. I used to always speak about being committed and I really wasn't committed. I remember when I was my junior year in high school, I was, I was playing football and we were in two a days and the second practice of the two days, I left with my friends and we we went we went to one of my friends' house and we had this idea where like we would go to this party and we went to this party and we enjoyed ourselves and we had a good time and we were drinking and we left that party we came home and a couple of my buddies got sick. So the next day, we all showed up at practice. Everybody still showed up, but one of the parents told the coach that, hey, a couple of the football players went to a party and they were drinking. And I was one of those people and we got, in tr- we got caught, we got in trouble, and we got, I got suspended from the football team. And I wasn't committed in my goal. I was, I was saying I wanted to be committed in my goal, but I was getting distracted. I wasn't focusing on playing football. I was focusing on hanging out with my friends. I was focusing on drinking when I should have been focused on playing football. I wasn't, I wasn't persistent. I didn't, I didn't, I would let little things get in my way, like going out and drinking and hanging out with my buddies and and my friends and it's, it's a fine to go hang out with your buddies and it's fine to go hang out with your friends, but hang out with them in a different way. Hang out with them training. Hang out with them weightlifting. So after getting suspended, you know, I got suspended for 20 days, which works out to be four weeks of a high school football season, which is basically the entire season. I think there was two games remaining after I got back from my suspension. And... At that time, I really, I was like, they took something away from me. Well, I took something away from me because I wasn't being committed to playing football. I was being committed to fooling around and joking around and not focusing on what I wanted to really do. I was committed to hanging out with my friends and drinking. So when they took that away from me or when it got taken away from me, 
I started to realize, man, I really, really love football. And I really, really want to be great at football. So after that that season, I, I committed. I, I went to the gym every week, multiple times a week. I had my coach work write me up a workout plan, and I stuck to it. This was the first time in my entire life that I actually stuck to a plan, a workout plan, for an extended period of time. I was so committed to being great. I was so committed to having seeing my dream through of of playing call high school football and being successful at it. Not just being on the team, but being successful at it. And then the next year came around and I was successful at it. I got the accolades that I wanted to get. I got the confidence that I wanted to have in myself that I could play and perform. And that's that same confidence that I took and I and I applied it to other areas of my life because confidence allowed me to achieve one goal. It also provided me the, the foundation to go after other goals and to be able to go to Syracuse, to be able to know that once I got there, I could compete with everybody. So commitment is the answer to so many people's problems. Staying focused on the goal to get the outcome being persistent through all of the challenges along the way and staying consistent to the outcome. Tony Robbins always says people overestimate what they'll do in a year, but they'll underestimate what they can do in 10 years. That is the game. All the greats talk about it. Robert Kiyosaki, the author of rich dad, poor dad has sold tens of millions of copies of that book says, those, who's, those who are successful in life make mistakes and then they learn from them. Those who are successful in school don't make mistakes. This game is not about not making mistakes. This game is about making mistakes, taking action, making mistakes, and then learning from those mistakes. Not continuing to make the same mistake over and over and over and over again. We must be committed to put the work in. My mentor, Myron Golden, always says, it's the work you do on it, and then there is the work it does on you. And you may say, hey, Oliver, what does that mean? Well, when you put work in on something, you're expending energy. You're, you're doing it. You're sweating. You're making it happen. But at the same time, it's the work it does on you. You're learning. Like most people think that they can just figure out things that, by talking about it and writing it down. I remember when I was at a coffee shop with my wife, Leah, we were eating breakfast and this couple came in beside us and they were sitting and they got, you know, two coffees and I saw them like tap their glasses and they said, here's to figuring it out. And in my mind, I'm like, you don't figure it out by talking about it. You figure it out by doing it. And as you do it, you learn the lessons. And then you, if you don't continue to repeat those lessons that you learn and you take the proper action the next time, then you can be successful. The only problem is you may say, I've, I've thought about all the problems already and That's great. You thought about the problems, but you just don't know when they're going to come into play. You don't know when they're going to come. They may come in a week. They may come in a month. They may come in a year. So all the plans you make in on writing and are in your head are great. And you might even account for the problems, but like you don't know when they're going to happen. So you sitting there figuring out on paper is great to begin with. But it's not the end all be all. The end all be all is actually putting it into action and figuring out as you go along with it. So that is why you must take action on your goals. Take action on what is in front of you now with a goal or an outcome as your North Star. Start something that and start something now that you're always shooting towards. Like 
I live, I grew up in Maine. If I'm heading down to Florida, Florida will be my North Star. I'm leaving Maine. I still need to go through Massachusetts. I need to attack the challenge of driving through Massachusetts. I need to attack the challenge of going through Connecticut, going through Rhode Island, going through New York. You know, like you just don't go from from Maine to Florida. You have to go through all of those other states to get to Florida. So address what you have in front of you now and have the big goal, have the North Star, have the direction, the overall direction that you're headed, but understand that you need to do the work now to get to where you want to go. So the first step is believing that is the air that gets you off the ground. That gets your goal up. The second step is commitment. This is the fuel that keeps your dream moving forward. The final step, the third step, is mobilizing your mindset. It is taking the necessary levels of action. And Grant Cardone speaks about this a lot. He says there's four levels of action. Level number one is you do nothing. That's like the guy just sitting on the floor just doing nothing. That's like the guy just sitting on the street doing nothing. He's literally doing nothing. He's not creating any action. He's not doing anything. Then you have retreat. That's someone that got hit with the COVID virus. Um, that's a business owner. The COVID virus hit. And then all of a sudden they, they have business, but they fire everybody because they're scared. And they say, I just, I'll just do it on my own. That's retreat. Then you have average levels of action. Average levels of action is you do one action. You do another action. You do one action here. You do one action there. You never ever take the necessary levels of action. Average levels of actions are the most dangerous because you actually train your mind to believe you're actually doing something. When in reality, you're doing something, but you're not doing enough to actually make your dreams and goals come true. You're doing enough to put something out there and just sit back and wait. The fourth level of action is massive action. This is when somebody has the thought process of, you do one, I'm going to do 10. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. And we all use different levels of these actions in our lives every day. Like there's times in my, in my life where I'm just doing nothing, where I'm sleeping, where I'm, I'm relaxing. I'm, I'm, I'm building up my energy sources. There's been times in my life where I retreat. I've trained my brain to, to know when I'm, I'm feeling like I want to retreat so that I can catch it quicker. But there's times when, like when the coronavirus hit for me, it was like, Oh crap, what's going on? Like, I wanted to retreat. I, I wanted to, I wanted to like make moves that probably weren't going to be the best for me, but I was able to catch myself and say, no, oh, this is the time I need to grow. This is the time we need to, we need to double down on everything we're doing. Don't retreat, stay after it, push even more now. And there's times where I, I take average levels of action. You know, I, I re remember this distinctly. I was talking with um, one of my friends and they were they were working through an exercise with me and they asked me about, you know, what's really important in my life. And I told them family and then what's next. And then I told them, you know, I think the first one actually was my wife. And then what's next after that? And then my sisters. And then what's next after that was was the people that I work around and my friends. And then what's after that? And then I said my business. And then they asked me, where do I put most of my time? And I was like, my time goes to my business. So I was thinking about that. And I'm like, wow. Here I am. I'm taking massive action in my business. And I'm not taking massive action in my family. Where, it's really, where I really want to see the growth. Where I really want to see the happiness. And it, and it was a huge eye, eye opener for me. It was something that was like, I really need to continue to push hard in my business, but I also need to take, start taking massive action in my personal life. 
So the person that takes massive action actually creates something. They take enough action to run into roadblocks and challenges and still have their opportunities to be able to reach their goals. Massive action will attract the talent that you want on your team. Like when I first met my partner, he was, uh, he, he knew my dad prior to us meeting and he met with me as a favor. Like he wasn't meeting with me to partner with me. He was meeting with me to kind of coach me a little bit and say, Hey, you know, like it's possible and, and to be an example. But he also in that meeting, he asked me a couple questions about what about this scenario or what about that scenario? And, and could I, do, do you think that would work? And I didn't know the answer right then and there, but I took massive action once I left that meeting to go figure out those answers. And in doing so, I attracted this person who had 30 years of experience, had done millions and millions of construction projects to want to work with me. It didn't happen because I took no action. It didn't happen because I retreated. I didn't even go to the meeting. It happened because I took massive levels of action. I also took massive levels of action when I started my business from like doing work for the government. You know, I was already in trouble from all of the previous actions that I had taken, you know, subcontracting and, and doing projects that weren't successful. So when I got into government contracting, I knew I had to move and I had to move quick and I had to move quick because I had put myself in such a hole. So I took massive action. I, I made a list of contracting officers and I was petrified to call them. I was scared to death, but I did it anyways. I took massive action on that list and I had tens and tens of people and I would call one and they would say, no, like, we don't have any opportunities. I would call the next and they said, no, we didn't have any opportunities. And then maybe one or two would say, yeah, you can come in and we'll, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll meet with you. But what was really great was I had taken so much action that I got my opportunity. And once I got my opportunity, then other opportunities started to come to me. And then it snowballed. So taking massive action allows for some opportunities to not go your way, but then some other ones to go your way. So there are three things that you must do before you do anything. And number one is belief. Number two is being committed. Number three is taking the necessary levels of action. These are all a must do before you do anything. Because if you don't do it in this order, you will do and stop. You will do and stop. You will do and stop. It's a vicious cycle. With love, keep putting one foot in front of the next. And I will have a special guest for you next time. Thank you for listening to The Imperfect Entrepreneur. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click subscribe down below and give me a thumbs up. You can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook at Oliver Fernandez 3 I have new videos just like this one dropping every week. So drop a comment down below and let me know what you want to hear next. Until then, keep growing and keep learning. Just do it.